Okay, welcome to the uh, next module on uh, testing. So, this is module number 8. In the last module, what we have seen is that we have understood what, what is the basic of VLSI testing, why do you require testing. So, the main point of uh, requirement of testing we saw was that uh, means as the yield of the VLSI circuits are lower because uh, we are continuously moving into higher and higher uh, submicron technologies or advanced technologies. So, our I mean accuracy or design uh, means correctness has not yet matured and then we move to another higher high end technology. So, I mean always these are chances of fa failures in the chips or defects in the chips and our main goal is to eliminate out the faulty chips and then uh, sell out or give the to the customers the uh, normal ones. So, and now the yield is lower because of the continuous the upliftment in technology. So, what the main aim is that we have to do good testing or somewhat uh, uh, VLSI testing kind of uh, stuff is required. So, that we can eliminate out the good chips and uh, and, discre uh, and uh, discard the faulty chips and for that testing is a important paradigm in case of circuits. Next we have seen that uh, testing can be functional and structural. So, in functional testing if there are n inputs we give to the power n all combinations of input and check against a golden response. So, here our main emphasis is to find that the chip performs fine or the chip performs ok for all the combination of inputs. But as you know that if the number of inputs of a circuit is about 100 or 200, then 2 to the power n is an infeasible number and testing will take years and uh, it will run into means uh, such a huge time that is not feasible. So, we have gone for what you call a structural testing. So, in structural testing what we do we are not much concerned about the functionality of the circuit, rather we break the circuit into whole circuit we have seen we break them up into some small small modules and each module we test them functionally and uh, and internal wires you can say that we test structurally. So, in that case we have seen that if your circuit modules or which you are breaking up into sub modules which you are testing functionally, then if your modules are quite large then what happens is the number of test input combinations are also higher because the 2 to the power n is also not a very small number if your sub modules are higher. But the advantage that you gain is that the number of intermediate lines between the sub modules are lower and so testing or controlling and observing these intermediate lines is easier. On the other hand if you make small modules of your whole circuit. Uh, that is if you have a larger circuit and you have small small modules, then uh, number of input patterns per module is very less that is an advantage, but then the number of intermediary lines in between the modules is very high and controlling them and observing them remains a challenge for which you need either pin outs or you require multiplexing arrangements or you require a shift register and so forth. And then we have seen to eliminate out all the problems we have seen one for a structural testing using a fault model. So, what is a fault model? In the structural testing with fault model we do not concern any we are not concerned at all about any kind of functionality of the circuit. Rather we want to find out or whether we want to verify that given a circuit there is no fault from the fault list. That is we have seen that stackhead fault model is one of the well accepted fault model in case which we have seen that we have given a circuit with AND gates and OR gates. Then we have to apply patterns so that you are able to verify that there is no stackhead faults at any of the lines. Then we have seen the advantages of stackhead fault models is that we do not require intermediate pin outs, we do not require intermediary multiplexers or shift registers to control and observe the lines. Further the number of one test pattern can be one test pattern can detect more than one faults. So, the advantage is that if there are 2n faults in a circuit where n is the number of lines, still 2n number of test patterns are not required, you require much less number of test patterns because one test pattern can detect a large number of faults. So, there are a lot of advantages when you are going for a structural test with a fault model and stackhead fault model is the well accepted one and also we have seen that structural uh, testing using stackhead fault model is widely accepted because if you can verify that the circuit does not have any stackhead faults, then you can be 99.9% .9 plus sure that the circuit is functionally or you can say that it can be accurate, you can be confident 99.9% .9 .9 accuracy that the circuit is free of defects. So, all those things make actually structural testing with stackhead fault model a widely accepted practice or widely accepted model. So, in this module what we are going to see is that how can you generate the test patterns that is given a circuit with n number of faults then after fault collapsing you can reduce the number of faults. Then for the remaining fault or whatsoever the case like for a given circuit and there are different faults which are which are the, the final list which has which has been derived after fault collapsing by dominance and equivalence then how can you generate test patterns which can detect the fault that is called test pattern generation. So, in this module or uh, in this um, in the module number 8 our main emphasis will be how to uh, uh, get test patterns which can determine uh, which can or in the other words how can you find out patterns which can detect the stackhead faults which are in your circuit. 
So, in the first lecture on this is on fault simulation and it is, is a quite long lecture. So, you can see we will be spending 3 days or you can call 3 modules I mean 3 sub modules 1, 2 and 3 will be on fault simulation. So, let us explore it. So, this is our so what is the test pattern generation as I told you. So, given a stuck at fault if you can this is a fault say then automatically you have to find out which pattern can test this fault. So, this is called actually test pattern generation this is called test pattern generation and now if the circuit is quite large then you need to obviously automate it and therefore, it is called automatic test pattern generation that is called ATPG. So, in this mo module we are going to look into details on this one say for example, this is your circuit which I also seen in your last lecture. Now, say this is a stuck at one fault. Now, say I want to find out a test pattern which can detect this fault. Okay, so, that is my question that is the main problem of ATPG. So, now you have to also try for fault at this point and fault at this point and so forth. Obviously, the number of faults will be limited by the fault collapsing algorithm. Now, actually this is a 3 process stage. So, you can also find it out as a I mean what do you call ad hoc in an ad hoc manner also you can find out. For example, you can say this stack at 1. So, obviously, you have to apply a 0 and then this value should be propagated this effect fault effect should be propagated to the AND gate. So, all these should be 1s and then uh, actually this uh, the fault effect is you have to apply a 0 normal case and the stack at 1 the faulty case it will be 1 and this fault effect has to be propagated at the output. So, all the other inputs of the AND gates are to be 1. Then if all the AND gates output are to be 1 then all the inputs have to be 1 for all the gates and for this case you have to apply uh, you have to get a 0 over here. So, either the inputs can be all zeros or it can be 1 0 0 1 so, accepting 1 1 1 1 all 1s any other pattern can be applied. So, that will be a test pattern generation that is a test pattern for this fault that is uh, any other combination other than 1 1 1 1 and all these have to be 1 1s accepting all 1s at this gate any other pattern like 0 1 1 1 1 or any other patterns accepting all 1s will test this fault. But there is a proper uh, algorithm we require to do this. This is actually called false sensitization, propagation, and justification. Let us see what it does. So, first is called the again just like our heuristic we have discussed the same thing. So, the first is called false sensitization. So, what do you mean by false sensitization? We say that the output net of G1 is stuck at 1, we need it to drive it to 0 to verify the presence or absence of a fault. So, just you can take the analogy of a say electric bulb which is fuse, which is so now if you want to test it, you have to make the switch on. So, if you switch the bulb on, then if it is fuse, then the bulb will not glow. That means what? In that case, you are sensitizing the uh, fuse fault, the bulb is fuse, so it is a fault you are sensitizing. So, in this case, they are saying that you are sensitizing it. So, sensitizing means if it is a stuck at 1, so you have to apply the reverse value. So, I have to apply a 1 over here. So, that is actually called the sensitization. Now, next step is actually called the fault propagation. Now, as already discussed in the last chapter or I mean last lecture that for structural uh, testing with fault models, you do not need to bring out any extra pins, neither you require any kind of a multiplexer arrangement, neither you require what you call a uh, shift register kind of a thing. That is if you have a circuit and then you have a lot of gates inside and you are going for structural, uh, these are the primary outputs and these are the primary inputs. Then we do not, we do not require any kind of extra pin outs or extra what you call this uh, shift register to control these like these things are not required. So, in structural uh, testing with structural fault model uh, structural testing with fault model. So, what is our idea is that whatever you have to do you have to do it from the primary inputs and the primary output that is why what you have to do this fault effect. So, what we are seeing this fault effect the fault effect is what in the normal case sorry this is a stack at 1. So, you have to apply a 0 I am sorry. So, the effect is this one which is actually uh, 0 in case of fault and uh, sorry normal fault 0 and fault is 1 this effect has to be propagated to this output. So, because whatever you do you only do at this output we cannot have this pin out this pin out is not allowed no pin out is in fact extra pin out is allowed. So, we have to bring this out. So, now in the output also effect will be this one we so, already written 1 if fault and 0 if no fault. Now, this is actually called the fault propagation. Now, the fault prop is propagated. Now, you have to justify that. What do you mean by justification? Just mean determination of values at primary input. So, that fault sensitization and fault propagation are successful. Let us see what does it mean. So, again as I told you, you do not have any multiplexer arrangement here, you do not have any multiplexer arrangement here, you do not have any multiplexer arrangement here. So, indirectly what is happening? You cannot control these lines. Okay, so, I mean the, to, uh, to have this fault value propagated from this point, from this point to this point, you cannot go for any additional control here. So, whatever control you have to do at these lines and these lines, you have to do only from the primary input. So, structural testing with fault model is nothing but controlling through the primary inputs and observing through the primary outputs. So, now you have to uh, pro sense and propagate you justify. So, you have to justify that this effect or the, all this input and this input is by 
controlling the primary inputs you have to justify that these things are successful. So, it is an AND gate. So, just go from one level. So, next level is that this effect has to be propagated to this one. So, if this effect has to be propagated all the other inputs of this AND gate has to be 1. So, this is the level 1 level 1 justification. So, this is level 1 justification right. Now, again now what happens? So, it again then now level 2 justification is saying that output of this gate is 1, output of this gate is 1 and the output of this gate is 1. So, how can you get this justification of the second level to be 1? All input of a AND gate has to be 1. Similarly, for all this has to be 1. Now, remains this one. So, in this case you require a value of 0. So, this has to be justified at the level 2. So, again justification AND gate output to be 0 is all pattern or any pattern excepting all ones. So, so your ATP algorithm will generate 0 1 1 1, it can also generate 0 0 0 0 0 any one of them that is arbitrary and that depends on the uh, some level of heuristics or some accuracy that we will see in the when we will be dealing in details on ATPG we will see it will determine whether you will generate 0 1 1 1 or all zeros or 0 0 0 0 1 it depends on many other factors. But for the time being the ATPG generation algorithm will justify this 0 by any pattern which is 0 1 1 1 0 0 anything. So, in this case it is assume that this is the pattern that is 0 1 1 1 has been generated and for justification of 1 1 in this case you get 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1. So, the test pattern generated is 0, 1, 1, 1 and all other inputs are 1, 1. So, it tests are stuck at 0 fault, sorry are stuck at 1 fault here. So, this is the basic step, steps of false sensitization, propagation and justification. So, this, so for all the faults if you do this, you are going to get what you called a or test pattern generated for all the faults. Now, when all the uh, test patterns are generated, they are stored in the memory. So, when this IC is fabricated and it comes from the uh, what you call fabrication unit. So, each IC you have to apply those inputs and you have to verify whether none of the faults, target faults would be present. So, if you apply all the test patterns, so automatically you will find out that now if none of the test patterns is giving a otherwise result that is if all the test patterns are verifying that there is no fault. So, you can say that your circuit is free of stuck at faults and it can be shipped to the market. So, as already told you, so, huh, so the test pattern generation procedure would generate any pattern in the table 1. So, it can generate all zeros with all 1. So, this can be 1 1 1, it can be 1 1 0. So, 2 to the power 25 minus 1 test patterns can be possible for the stack at fault. And it depends on the ATPG algorithm whether we will generate 0 0 0 0 for the first AND gate or 0 0 0 1 for this one or 0 1 1 1 1 1 for the first gate. So, it depends, but anything would do your job because we require 0 at the output of the first gate and all ones and ones at the output of all the other AND gates. Now, the now the question arises that do you require to do this individually for all faults. So, now what our, our goal in the last module we have seen that our goal is to reduce the test generation time or the test application time. So, you have to go down in time. So, from 2 to the power n input patterns we came to k where k is the number of stack at faults that is 2 n. So, if there is n lines, so there are 2 n number of test uh, stack at 0 faults can be possible and if there are 2 k number of uh, sorry if there are n number of lines then 2 n number of stack at faults can be possible. So, k patterns that may for each jacket fault if you assume in the worst case is one pattern required. So, k pattern that is 2 n patterns is required in the maximum case. But again you can see that uh, by st st structural fault collapsing by dominance and equivalence you find that it is much much less than even k. So, it is k by a fact k is also much much reduced than k. So, even if there are n lines in the circuit number of test pattern I mean uh, stacket faults are much much less than 2 n because of the collapsing and so test pattern requests are even much less than that. So, now our now again we are going another level down. So, that even if we have some say p number of faults after start after all the fault collapsing. So, we require at least p number of test patterns to detect it because 2 n is the number of faults or for uh, 2 n is the number of if n is the number of nets in the circuit. So, at max we have 2 n stack at fault stack at 0 and stack at 1 for each line by collapsing we have reduced it to p. Now, can we go even less than p? Can we have any number of can we have can we declare say that the number of test pattern requests are even less than p? The answer is yes because sometimes we may find out that one test pattern can detect more than one number of faults that also can be possible. So, that is actually called uh, I mean uh, 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 what do you call single uh, pattern can detect multiple number of faults. So, therefore, if you are repeating uh, if you are taking the approach of sensitized propagate and justify. So, what you are doing you first take one fault then you do a sensitized propagate and justify and generate one pattern say p 1 you are generating for this. Now, you take another pattern do a sensitization propagation and justification that you get pattern p 2. Similarly, you keep on doing this, keep on doing this, and after that, you uh, say get say get PL 
is the number of fault. The lth, uh, lth number of fault you do, and you generate say PK, PL. Sorry, PL is the pattern. Uh, I am sorry. Uh, uh, what you what I was saying that you have uh, fault P1, then you have fault P2, then you have fault PL. So for that you are generating say uh, um, uh, PP1, this pattern one. Then for P, fault number two you are generating pattern number two, and here you are generating pattern number K. Fault fault PLK. But now you find out that PL1, that is sorry, that is for fault P1, if the pattern you are saying PPL1 is equal to PPL, PPL or PL, that is for the lth number of fault and the first number of fault, the same pattern is generated by this automatic test plane generation that is sensitive propagation justified. So, you are at a loss because the same pattern that is at PPA 1 or the uh, pattern for the first fault you have generated that is what is happening is that this that same pattern is detecting more number of fault that is the first pattern is detecting fault number 1 as well fault number L. So, unnecessarily we are wasting time in uh, automatic test pattern generation using synthesized propagation justify where the same pattern can detect multiple number of faults. So, let us think we try to think it in some other way can I do something so that we apply one pattern and find out how many faults are detected and then remove those faults and then try to apply another pattern pattern and see how many faults are detected and so forth. So, in this case what will save? We will save the unnecessary load of the case where one fault can one pattern can detect multiple number of faults. Like in this case pattern number 1 is detecting 1 as well as pattern uh, what you call the fault number L. So, there is a redundancy, but if you have say that if I apply say pattern PP 1 and then you find out which faults are detected then automatically you will be able to tell that it detects fault P 1 and also detects fault P 2 for P L. So, in this case you will be saved from executing the same algorithm twice for P A fault number 1 and fault number L. So, we will see that. So, that is actually called fault detection by ra random what you call uh, random pattern generation. So, in this case sensitize propagation and justify by this approach when you are going for, uh, for test pattern generation it is called a deterministic approach. In this case you are sensitizing the fault propagating the effect and you are justifying this. And when you are doing it randomly, you get apply a pattern and then see how many faults are detected and again repeat this, then we call this a random pattern generation. So, we will see that. So, both of them have their own advantage, slowly we will see, but as of now it appears that which is more advantageous? The more advantageous is the random pattern generation. You apply a pattern and see how many faults are detected. Let us consider the same circuit. If you consider back, we will take the same circuit here, the same circuit we are going to consider. This is the same circuit we are going to consider and now say what can you do say all some faults are there some stacked faults and stacked 0 faults are over there. So, now what do you do? So, you say randomly you apply this pattern just uh, all of us sometime you dream that this is a very good pattern you apply. Then you can find out that what are the faults that are detected. So, you can find out that more than one faults will be detected by this pattern. So, 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 1. So, this pattern let us see what happens. So, in this case you are applying all ones and here you are applying say 1 0 0 0 1 some pattern you are applying. So, which faults are detected? Obviously, this is 1 1. So, this is 0 over here, this is 1 1 and this is something. So, okay. so obviously, a stacked one fault is detected over here. Yeah. So, obviously, a stacked one fault will be detected by this because all lines are 1 and you apply the pattern 0 0 0 0 1. So, it is 0 and so obviously, a stacked one fault is there. Similarly, the same thing you can also say that it is uh, also detecting a stacked uh, uh, what you can say it is also uh, detecting is a 0 over here. So, obviously, it is also detecting a uh, stack at one fault over here because I, I, in this case the answer is 0, but if you stack at one fault, so the answer will be this one. So, similarly you can see that one random pattern is detecting this two faults. Okay. So, we can also have more examples of similar nature. So, in this case now if you see that I apply this pattern. So, in this case it is so it is swing detecting two faults stack at one at the net of this one and stack at one at the net of this one. Okay, two faults detected. Now, so the next random pattern is this one, all ones. So, all ones which one is going to happen? So, if you are applying all ones over here, all ones, then obviously stack at 0 fault at any point of the circuit is detected. That is, a uh, stack at 0 of here will be detected, a stack at 0 will be here detected, a stack at 0 here will be detected, and so forth. But if you are going for, uh, you know, if you take the example, let me uh, just elaborate on this part. So, uh, by fault collapsing and all those things, so we have seen that generally we are going to have a stack at 0 at one input of the AND gate and all stack at 1s will be there, all stack at 1s will be there, right. So, in this case also one stack at 0 will be there for one input and stack at 1 at all the input lines will be there. 
all AND gate inputs have is there and only one will have a stuck at zero fault by equivalent. Now, the random pattern generator is all ones. So, you can easily find out that if you are applying all ones, then what can happen is that the same pattern will detect a stuck at zero fault here, and it can also detect a stuck at zero fault here, and also it can detect a stuck at, fault, stuck at zero fault here. So, one random pattern can detect stuck at zero faults at all lines in the circuit, and uh, if you consider fault collapsing, we will not have stuck at zero faults at all the lines of the circuit, but we will have one stuck at faults at each input, each AND gate input. So, if there are 5 AND gates, so you will be able to detect 5 stuck at zero faults by the same pattern. So, random, but if you are using the sensitized propagate and justify ap approach, then for the 5 stuck at faults at this point say, at this point say, and this point say. So, what you have to do? You have to first apply a 1 over here, like for example, if you take this approach. So, it is a not a simple one. So, so, if you have a stuck at 0 fault over here, so you have to apply a 1 over here. Then you have to propagate this value to be here. So, you want to propagate the value here. So, all other will have to be 1. Then sorry, you have to propagate the value here. So, it will be uh, in case of normal 1, fault in case 0 and then again the effect has to be propagated from here because we are testing the stack at 0 fault here. So, 1 you have to apply, this is the normal 1 fault 0, normal 1 fault 0. Now, you have to, uh, this is the propagation, now you have to justify. So, these lines has to be 1, right? And then, if these lines has to be, all others has to be 1, all others has to be 1 and here also everything has to be 1 if you want to apply. So, again you have to repeat the same thing for a stack at 0 fault here and stack at 0 fault. So, it is a long procedure. Okay. So, if it is a long procedure that is the problem, but now by random pattern generation it is very simple. You apply this pattern and you can find out that we can detect a much more larger number of faults. Uh, in this case, you can see 33 number of patterns has been faults has been detected by this approach. So, as of now, it seems that this is a very good idea that you go for a random pattern generation based testing rather than go for sensitive propagate and justify. So, what is the idea of let us look at it. So, what is the basic algorithm? You check a random pattern, any random pattern, then you determine the output of the circuit in the random pattern, in the normal circuit do not consider any fault, but determine the output of the circuit for that random pattern. Now, take one fault from the fault list and modify the circuit. Okay. So, for example, if this target one fault at the output of G 1 if you take say for example, the same circuit. So, in this case, if you are taking a stuck at one fault here, okay, so the output of this AND gate functionality will be uh, output of G 2 AND output of G 3 dot 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 output of G 5, because this is stuck at one. So, this gate input has no effect. So, the Boolean function will be modified as O of G 2 AND O of G 3 and O of G 4 and G 5, because this is modified because it is already stuck at 1. So, this has no control available effect on the AND gate. So, just modify it. So, it is uh, it is 1 that is already there AND of I 2, I 3, I 4 and I 5, which is equivalent to this one, 1 is removed. So, Boolean function is modified. Now, you determine the output of the circuit that is change circuit, the circuit with the fault for the random pattern for the same random pattern as input. If the output of the normal circuit varies from the one with the fault, then the random pattern detects the circuit under consideration. So, what we have done? We have taken the circuit, we have applied a random pattern and we have recorded the output. Now, what we do now? We change the circuit with the fault, now apply the same random pattern and if we found find that the output varies, then that pattern random pattern detect that fault. Now, we next what we do? We again uh, we delete the fault and say that it is detected, then we take another fault and find out or uh, find out what is the case whether the same random pattern detects another fault or not. So, the same things are detected for the other fault in the list, this considered till all the faults are listed. Right, this is how it is, it, the random pattern goes. And you can easily see that random pattern approach is very easy, just you have to apply the pattern and just you have to find out the output of the circuit. It does not require any kind of uh, like uh, sensitization. And, and one thing I should point out, which we will be discussing in details in the future lectures, that always uh, sensitize, propagate, and justify approach may not be successful. That is, you may be able to sensitize a fault, propagate the value to the output, but you may not be able to justify it. Then again, you have to reiterate and find out another way of propagating the fault output. Maybe there are multiple for paths to for propagate the fault to the output. Say for example, if there is an AND gate over here and the fault can be propagated through here, the fault can be propagated through here, the fault can be propagated through here. So, you may try out with this one. Then what may happen is that you may find out that you may not be able to justify it or you may not be able to propagate it through this. Then you have to try through this part and you have to try through this part. In other words, there can be requirement of lot of backtracks if you are going with the sensitized propagation and justify approach. So, the in that way, the uh, random pattern generation is very much efficient algorithm in which one, what case in what we do is that we apply the test pattern, out, find out the output of the circuit and then we modify the circuit with the fault and see if there is any difference. That is a very simple idea. Now, the question is then do you require the sensitized propagate and justify approach? The answer is yes. 
So, statistically this graph has been found. So, what is they are saying that if there is if the circuit has say 100 folds, then what you do you apply the first random pattern then it detects 20 number of folds. Next random pattern you do is say they generate another 20 number. This keep on goes and then it saturates. That means what up to around 90 percent of the faults you can get a very good fault coverage per random test pattern. That means what you apply one pattern it detects 10 faults. You apply another random pattern you get another 10 faults. Then you apply another random pattern you get 8. If you keep on doing it after that there is some faults which are called difficult to test for. By applying random patterns you may not be able to test this fault or in other words you apply 10 random patterns you detect 90 faults. For the rest 10, 10 faults which we are calling a difficult to test pattern, difficult to test for, you have to apply say more than 30 number of random patterns. That is first random pattern you apply after 90 no fault is detected. You have the other random pattern none of the 10 faults are detected. You keep on doing it say after, after 30 first random pattern say the fault one of the faults get detected and you keep on doing it. So, you have to apply a great number of random patterns to detect those last 10 number of faults. So, whenever you find that the number of random patterns or are getting a saturation or you are saying that it gets saturated that is the efficiency of random test pattern generation gets satisfied I mean saturated. So, after say 90 percent of the faults for the rest 10 percent of the faults you find out that after applying 10 random patterns one fault is getting detected. So, after that it is actually become more difficult than the sensitized propagate and justify approach. Then what do we do after that we stop random pattern generation approach. That is when you find that 3 consecutive random patterns or 4 consecutive random patterns are not able to detect any new fault. Then what do we do? We stop at that point and from this point we term that uh, term them as difficult to test faults and for them what we do? We apply sensitized propagate and justify approach of doing. So, you cannot say that sensitized propagate and justify approach is a very I mean a very difficult approach. So, you should throw away with it and we should always go for uh, I mean what you call random pattern generation it is not the case. For the first few uh, faults or for the 90 percent of the faults random pattern is very good because you can uh, detect large number of faults by the I mean just applying a random pattern and verifying which faults are getting detected. But once you get a saturation after that the random pattern generation becomes inefficient because for one pattern you may not be able to detect anything and you have to keep on doing it till you get a fault. So, for those faults it is better to go for sensitized propagate and justify. So, we can give a very simple analogy. So, I think all of you might have gone to fairs or, or, or melas where you have a balloons. So, where there is a lot is a board where there are lot of balloons over there and you have to shoot with a gun. So, what you can do if there are lot of balloons in the board then you can randomly shoot and some of the balloons get busted that is true. Even if I do not have a very good aim. So, what I can do is that I can randomly fire the bullets and most of the balloons get blasted or at least few of the balloons get blasted. Now, why it happens because there is more number of solutions or more number of points and randomly firing gets the uh, gets your answer. The same thing happens here more number of faults are there. So, you can just apply random patterns and you can detect the fault. But when the number of balloons remains very less that most of the balloons you have blasted and a few say around 5 or 6 balloons are remaining. So, at the time what is what happens at that time it is very difficult then you have to aim and then find out how far is that how, how low how you are holding your gun and all those precautions you have to take care and then only you can blast the balloon. So, it is same analogy here. So, when lot of faults are there you can randomly do all the things, but whenever the number of faults are coming to be less then what you have to do then you have to do a, go for a very aimed approach which is called the sensitized propagate and justify. So, same analogy here. So, in the first we will go. Uh, so, actually the, the, the test plan generation is done in two phases first we go for a random pattern uh, with a re whenever a random new pattern detects a reasonable number of new faults when you find that is not being done then we go for a sensitized propagate and justify approach of detecting the faults. So, this is actually <coughs> the second phase. So, which will be dealing later uh, in the part of the course, but now we will see how we can efficiently do this. So, for uh, what do you call for uh, we have seen that uh, for circuit the test pattern generation by random pattern. So, what we have to do we have to take the circuit and give some input and get the output. So, that means what there is uh, the circuit is there because, but you have to know the circuit is not yet fabricated. So, we are finding out which patterns have to be applied when the circuit is fabricated. So, all this test generation activity is, is being done when the circuit is being designed fabrication has not been done. So, we do not have the circuit in the hard form that is do not have the fabricated version of the circuit. So, we have a say the circuit in soft copy say in a program or some other manner this is soft copy. So, only soft copy is available and then you have to find out which patterns. So, by random pattern so you are applying some random pattern 1s and 0. So, you have to find out the output. So, that means what? you have to simulate your circuit. So, what do you mean by simulation of the circuit? The imitation the imitative representation of the functioning of the circuit by means of another alternative say a computer program is called simulation. 
that is you do not have the hard copy of your circuit or you do not have the hard version of your circuit or the fabricated circuit you do not have you apply some patterns and this circuit is represented in a computer program and you can generate the output after that you can apply the fault and repeat the same thing. So, in other words you do not have the hard copy, but you represent the circuit in a computer program that is very much required for uh, fault uh, test pattern generation by sensitized propagate and justify approach. So, we will study in detail circuit simulation and also about fault simulation. So, what do you mean by fault simulation? In fault simulation the circuit is there as a program and then uh, a fault is inserted in the circuit which is represented as a program and you find out what is the output corresponding to a random input. So, first we will see something called a compiled code simulation. So, what is a compiled code simulation? The whole circuit is represented as a C program or any other program and you generate the output for input just on the C program. Just like compiled code simulation involves describe the circuit in some language which can be compiled in a computer like it can be hardware language by Verilog VHDL or it can be simple C and then you have to give some input and you get the output and you can repeat it as long as you want. Say for example, a very simple circuit two in, four inputs and one output. Now, how do you do this? So, very easy you can represent it in C. So, you have lines like 1, 2, 3, 4 these are the input lines and this is the output line these are temporary variables. Now, you pr uh, print f input the values of this one then you scan f then you do this do ending and then final ending and the output of the circuit is so. So, different inputs you can give and different outputs you can get from the circuit. So, this is a very simple approach. Now, if you want to find out some fault maybe ask some stack at one fault is there or some stack at 0 fault is there, there you can some if some stack at fault is there for and 2 then this can be ended with 0 and so forth just you can modify the circuit for the different kind of a fault and then you get the uh, compiled code fault simulation that is very simple just you have to apply a I um, mean what you call fault for doing it. But now you see what happens say for example, uh, you first you give input as 1 1 1 1 and then you generate the output. So, what will happen? So, if you give 1 1 1 1 so first what will happen? First this is a set sentence is executed, so it is 1 and 1, so OG 1 is equal to 1. Now, then these things are also 1 1, then OG 2 is also computed to be 1 and then this is done, then O is generated to be 1. So, it is a 3 tape computation. So, fine this is done, next what you do is that, say so, next we apply 0 1 1 1, that is the next random factor. So, in C language what is going to happen? So, again the same code will run and it will take 3 steps. So, it will be uh, 0 and 1 that is equal to 0, this is 1 and this is 0 and 1 is equal to 0. So, answer is 0, but again takes a 3 step. But you clearly observe this circuit, we do not require to do so much activity, but you because you see this we are changing from 0 to 1, fine this is no change, this is no change, this is no change. So, output here is changing from 1 to 0 and this one is changing to 0. So, only 1 bit 2 bit computation or 2 line computation is fine, that is you need to compute this obviously, this you need not compute is already the same obviously you need to compute this and do it. So, that is what the circuit there are some changes, but if you are going for a compiled code simulation then the problem is that you have to have a simulation for the entire part of the circuit. In other words you now you consider it a very big circuit and you say that there is no changes in other parts of the circuit and only a minor change here which is reflected only part minor change. But now, if you are going for a compiled code simulation, then what will happen is that the whole circuit will have to be re-simulated and which is actually going to give you a big problem. That is unnecessarily just for a minor change, your whole circuit you are going to go for a uh, compiling, compiling change then you are executing everything is re-evaluated. So, even if a very small part of the circuit is being changed, but for the compiled code simulation, then you are changing or you are recomputing or you are doing redundant computation for other parts of the circuit. So, to avoid this one we call event driven simulation. So, what is the idea of a event driven simulation? So, the idea of a event driven simulation is something like this. Uh, say for the same circuit we take. So, for the same circuit if you take in case of an event driven simulation what is happening is say so this is the event ok and there is no event in this part of the circuit maybe some other big circuit is there there is also no event. So, this part will not go for any kind of a computation. So, what we will do only we will go for computation of this part of the circuit where there are some event changes. So, that is actually called event driven these are some of the events happening. So, this is actually called event driven simulation. So, it will save lot of time in your uh, in your in your computer or execution of the uh, fault test pattern generation by random pattern. So, event driven is very efficient because it detects any signal changes and that triggers other signals. So, it is done in a recursive manner, we will see with an example how it is done. So, for example, the same circuit we take, so this is a first change. So, time t equal to 0, so one change is this one, i equal to 1, so this change is 0. 
So, now only the next level pat test patterns or next level signals from this gate because this is re evaluated will come in the activity list. So, only OG 1 will be in this activity list. Now, why is that? So, this will be because the output of this gate is only OG 1 and only it is one level jump is allowed, one level jump. Only one level is allowed. So, as uh, this is a change here, so only this can be in the activity list. Okay, then fine. So, you reevaluate this, this is the case. So, OG1 changes from 0 to 1. So, OG1 changes from this one. So, the only the activity list will be output of this one because only one level is allowed. So, this change is there. So, this will come in the activity list. This one is the case, and then this evaluates to be O equal to 0 and nothing in the activity list, and you stop. So, you just require a very small number of computations to do it and you do not do, do any kind of a no computation required. No computation is required for this, only you require this. So, what is the basic idea here? You have a circuit and you have some gates. So, basic philosophy of this one let me discuss. So, what we do is we have something like we have a gate like this, some signal change some ch signal change is there, then output of this one will be in the activity list that is it. And again any change here will be again corresponding to this activity change. For example, if you have something like this say, say this had been the case say for example. Now, in this case what would happen? Say this was our initial pattern was 1 0 1 1. Now, you change this one from this one. Now, what will happen? I equal to 1 to 0, activity list is O equal to 1. Now, activity is 0 1 and a 0 and a 0, the activity list is 0. So, initially it was also 0, now it is also 0. So, the activity list will be empty in this case because it is 0 to 0. So, no change is there and everything will stop over here and this change is also not there. So, in level 2, the propagation will stop. But if you are taking a compiled code simulation, then you again you have to evaluate this, evaluate this, evaluate this and so forth and it is a wastage of time in computation. So, even driven simulation is helping a lot. Now, we have to go for circuit simulation. So, what do you mean by a circuit simulation? In case of a fault, sorry, we have seen about circuit simulation. Circuit simulation means what? A circuit is there and then you want for applying some inputs and you are finding out the output be it compiled code simulation or event driven simulation. But for a fault simulation, but we know that for random test pattern generation, what you have to do? We have to put the fault in the circuit and then you have to go for fault simulation, circuit simulation. So, for fault simulation is nothing but if you have a circuit with a fault and then you have to simulate the circuit for the out some output for given for some given input, you just find out the output, it is called fault simulation. You can also call fault circuit simulation, also you can call you can also call it fault circuit simulation. So, fault simulation is like an ordinary simulation, but it has two versions one is without fault and one is with, with fault. that is a very simple idea. So, uh, the and if the output of the fault faulty circuit is not matching with the output of the normal circuit that is what is desired then you know that the random pattern or the pattern is detecting the fault that is what is the idea of fault simulation. Let us see this is a block diagram which shows this. So, there is some random pattern. Now, what happens? So, you are applying uh, what you called uh, this is a circuit with fault 1, fault 2, fault 10, all the faults are there and this is normal circuit output. You are comparing this one and then if, if there is a mismatch, this fault is detected, this fault is detected and you re re remove them and you take random pattern number 2. This is how it is done. So, we have and you, if you are so how we are improving it, you are improving it using what you call the event driven simulation. So, if you are using event driven simulation, so you are simulating circuit 1, circuit 2, circuit 3 with faults and uh, and this you are also uh, with fault 1, fault 2, fault 3. So, even if you are doing it with fault, so there can be little amount of changes in the whole circuit. So, even if you are doing a what you call the event driven simulation, so you can save a lot on the computations. So, that is one is once once one way you are saving, but only one another factor you are saving we are not doing another thing is that in one random pattern we are trying to see if one fault is detected. So, there also we can parallelize. So, two way way of making it efficient one is event driven which is already seen and that is parallel. That is here what we are doing? We are taking a circuit, applying one test pattern, random pattern and see if the fault is detected, then up with fault 2 and fault 3 and so on. So, we need to also think if we can find out that given a random pattern, how many faults it can detect in one go. That is one good way of doing it and that is event driven because if you are going for compiled code simulation, then for even for a small number of uh, fault, I mean fault change or the input pattern change, we have to go for a full code simulation. So, that is one thing we have, these are two factors we have to improve. So, one improvement is this event driven and that is parallelism. So, both of them we are going to see in details. 
So, but if, if you are not doing anything for this, this also even random pattern generation, random displacement generation is also not very simple because the time is how much number of faults for the is random pattern. Say for the say the ith random pattern till say for example, we start with 100 faults. First, first pattern for the first pattern how many faults we require to check for all 100s we require to check in pattern number 1. Because 100 faults are there you have to check for 100. Say for 10 patterns, get 10 faults get detected by the pattern very good. Now, pattern number 2 comes then again 90 remaining faults has to be tested for that. Say, say 20 faults get detected some by some reason. Then for pattern number 3 you have to go for 70. So, similarly you go and say for the 10th number fault there is only 10 patterns remaining and say somehow only 1 fault get detected. Then for the 11 pattern 9, 9 faults has to be checked, 12, 9 fault because this is saturates. Say up to 100 patterns 9 faults has to be tested. Generally we stop at this point because things have get saturated. But you see for the first pattern 100 pa faults has to be checked for, for uh, fault pattern 2, 90 faults has to be checked for and so on. So, I mean if you are do not have a parallel fault simulator that is I mean if you are, you can somehow parallelize the algorithm that is for a single pattern you can check whether uh, among these 90 faults 100 faults are there can you check parallelly that whether all the faults are detectable for this random pattern would be a very good idea and also uh, and and we, Apart from that, also you should be able to uh, do. You should be able to simulate your circuit for minimum requirement. Only those things are changed. That only you should be taking into picture and not more. So we say that the number of that is I mean, uh, uh, event driven simulation. So whatever minimal changes is there, only that part has to be simulated, and other things are to be retained. Again, okay, you should avoid. Ran, I mean, what do you call? You should avoid uh, uh, redundant simulation. Uh, so, uh, we say that the time uh, for fault simulation is faults for the is random test pattern into simulation time that is uh, fault simulation normal value is always there and number of random patterns you are going for that. That is not a very small number. Okay, so, we have to see. So, that is what is improving fault simulation algorithm that is minimum uh, computation change that is event driven simulation. So, whenever there is a pattern change or whenever there is a fault change minimum changes are there then you have to go for only incremental simulation that is event driven simulation you should not simulate the whole circuit and determine more than one fault can be detected by a random pattern that is check is parallelized. So, if these two algorithms these two features we can build in then our things will be improved. So, that is what we are going to do. So, first we are going to see a very simple uh, pa, pa, I mean, what the fault simulation algorithm which is called the serial fault simulation that is the very simplest one. So, in this case what it is done? So, it is nothing but uh, you apply a pattern then you apply one fault the serial because serial you are going to check then you see whether you apply a pattern and whether see apply a pattern then take one fault and see if the fault is detected by the pattern if so the uh, fault is dropped and that is fault is considered and is already been tested then you take another fault see whether it is detected by the ran same random pattern and so on one by one you test for all the faults which is remaining and then when all the faults have been checked for say you did get that n number of faults has been detected. So, that you uh, uh, remove from the circuit that out of 100 some 10 faults have been detected removed. So, now for the 90 faults you repeat the same procedure for the next pattern. So, that is the next fault are introduced one by one that is a very important thing here this one by one you are introducing the faults and doing the fault simulation. So, if the output is different faults are detected and so forth but the for the simple uh, serial pattern. So, that is the very important I mean that is the main idea is that one by one you are taking. But again one thing we have to remember that always we are going to use event driven simulation and even then we are going to improve on serial parallel deductive and all those things slowly they will come into picture. So, let us study serial fault simulation with example. So, let this be the circuit this is the circuit you can see. So, one thing I should say here that uh, this is input I 1 G 3. So, this is all fan outs are different if you remember. So, this is I 2 G 1 this is I 2 G 2 this is input 2 of G 2 some names we have given. So, this is this output is O 2 this is O 1. So, in testing as we know all fan outs are different. So, I am putting a different name to this one also it is I 1 G 3 so, input 1 G 3 this is output G 2 no problem. So, this is the one this is I should remember I 1 G 3 uh, sorry I 1 G 3 this is this net ok. So, now so there is a stack at 0 fault over here. So, what do you have to do say for example, we do a random pattern is say 1 1. So, the what is the output of this circuit normal case O 2 equal to 1 O 1 equal to 0 that is uh, very simple because 1 1. So, the answer is 1. So, it is 1 and in this case it is 1 it is 0. So, the answer is 0. So, 1 0 is the result for the normal circuit and this is the random pattern right. So, now 
we are going for this one. So, the same random pattern and we are going to see whether this tacket fault is detectable or not. So, this is serial. So, we will take one fault at a time. So, this is one and a one event driven simulation. So, as I already told you that only one level is allowed. So, this is in the activity list and this is in the activity list. So, only two things will be in the activity list. So, uh, what you have here is I 1 equal to 1 and I 2 equal to 1 sorry uh, and this one will also be there because this is also in the list. So, activity is I 2 G 1, I 2 G 1 is the single level O G 1, O G 1 same, same level and I 2 G 2, this I 2 G 2 because this is the signals we have and this is the one level change from the signals. So, one level change from these things. So, you are going to have these things are the activity list because you are saying that the, this signal changes that is input equal to 1 and input equal to 1, these two equal to 1, 1 are going to have direct impact on these three points only this one, this one is a direct impact. So, these are in the activity list. Now, if you have uh, this 1 and a 1 over here, so you can compute this to be 0 because of the stack at fault this is 0. So, I 1 G 1 is 0 and then this is also I 2 G 2 is also 0. This you can compute, but this you cannot compute because in the second round this value is not known. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, uh, what is in the new activity list? This one is in the new activity list because of this and this one remains in the activity list. This, this could not be computed because in the first value this, this one was not known to us. Correct. So, now in the next activity list we have O G 1 and O G 2. Now, what happens? Now, what we do is that? So, now we have the values over here. So, we have O G 1 equal to 0, this one we know O G 1 equal to 0 and O 2 G 1 equal to 1, these things we know. Now, what is in the activity list? The activity list will be now O 1 because of this one we have O 1 because this value is known. So, this point is also known which I call I 1 G 3, this is I 1 G 3 okay, and O 2 obviously, this one will be there because this is there. So, one value jump will be there, this one level jump is allowed. So, this is your thing. Now, you can easily see that if this one is a 0, so next jump O 2 is equal to a 0 and if you look at the normal circuit O 1 was a 1. So, you can stop at this point say that 1 1 detects this stuck at 0 fault because in if stuck at 0 fault this is 0 and normal case it is a 1. So, it detects the fault and the thing is that so, uh, this is by a random pattern simulation. So, I mean this we are doing event wise because we are doing only for those parts where there is a signal change. Now, so one fault has been detected. Now, let us see what next same pattern is there, we are going for a serial fault simulation. So, we are going for this fault, okay. another fault we have taken, this is stuck at one fault over here. So, this one has already till I 1 G 3, this is there for you. Okay. So, now again we are going to look at for all these things. So, now what happens? So, this 1 1 say random pattern. So, now in this case this 1 1, so activity list are these 3, uh, this point this point and this point. So, this is the value. So, now you are going to get 1 1 over here because the fault is here not here this time. So, you are going to get I 1 and this one. So, these values are there. So, if these values are there, so we are having O G 1 as this activity value already it was there it could not be computed a new one added is O G 2. Now, you see so this is 1 and in normal case the output should be 0, but as it is stuck at 1 O G 2 will be 1 it is not 0 because of the stuck at fault and O G 3 if you see I 1 G 3 sorry I 1 G 3 is 1 because this value is propagated. So, these values you get okay. and sorry sorry this is the pattern which I was saying. So, O G 1 and O G 2 you get. So, O G 1 is 1 and O G 2 is also 1 because of the stack at fault over here. The activity list in this case is output 1 because this value we have and then I 1 G 3 because of this value this is also in the activity list and obviously, O 2 will be in the activity list. Now, what do you do? Now, uh, new value which we are obtaining out here is O 2. So, this O 2 is equal to 1 because initially we have it now we are having a value of 1 over here. So, O 2 is equal to 1 and as well as we are also having this value from here to here it is 1 as well as from here to here it is 1. So, I 1 3 I 1 G 3 1 that is this fan out is also having the value of 1 and in the activity list is now 1 because this signal is ready. Okay. So, it was also there, but initially we could not compute the value because this value was not ready value of this fan out was not ready. So, in the what you can call in the second step the value was not ready. So, you could not compute it, but now in the third step this value of O 1 is ready. So, in the value of sorry, step number 3 this value is also there this value is there. So, we can compute O 1. So, now this is in the activity list and the fourth stage O 1 equal to 1. So, it is a fault is captured because in the normal case the answer was 1 and this answer was 0. So, fault is detected, but there is a one difference you have to observe here very carefully here that here we require four steps to do it and here we require only three steps to do. 
So that is the beauty of compiled code simulation. So we are going event wise, whenever we detect that there is a difference with the normal circuit, we immediately stop. So for this fault, we could not, did not go for computation of this one, which required fourth step. So we could have easily stopped at the third stage and we find out that the answer is the, there is fault simulated, so fault has been detected and we are done. But for, but for this one, this one we had to go for stage number 4. Why we had to go for stage number 4? Because the fault is detected by this gate and not the, by this output. So, we had to go for stage number 4. But had it been a compiled code simulation, then we are not going in a stepwise manner. We are get simulating the circuit totally and then we are comparing this one with this one. So, unnecessarily many times we will be going for, here also we will go for T, all for all circuits you have to go to the exhaustive level. So, here also you would have gone for unnecessarily T4 which is not required. So, for big circuit examples we can verify that always you will be at lot of gains if you are going for a compile code simulation, sorry you are going for a uh, event driven simulation. So, this was one example in case of serial fault simulation. So, now one small thing I would like to add before uh, closing on to this lecture that is uh, we are always saying that this level is stuck at this level is stuck at 1. Then, but algorithmically or in a circuit nature how do you insert a fault? This is very simple. So, if you want to add a stuck at 0 fault at this net you put a AND gate with this is the normal this input was normally I 2 you put a AND gate with 1 bit 0. So, always it will be 0. So, this mimics a stuck at 0 fault. If you want a stack at 1 fault over here, then you this is your OG2 and you put a OR gate with 1 input fixed at 1. So, this will mimic your stack at 1 fault and this is going to mimic your stack at 0. Fault. So, this is how you can mimic. Okay, so, this was very, very simple, but why do we require this? Because when you are using a fault simulator, then you cannot say this is stuck at 0, this is stuck at 1, because writing it as stuck at 0 and stuck at 1 will not be handled by a circuit simulator. So, what it will do? You have to represent stuck at 0 and stuck at 1 by means of some gates, and there will be mimicry is required, and this mimic and this mimicry will let you fault simulation for this part of the circuit. So, with this uh, we stop uh, today and uh, so what we have uh, that is remaining for the next two series of lectures in this fault simulation. So, here we have improved on fault simulation by we are not using compiled code. So, we have the better technical even driven simulation, but still our faults were serial. So, we took fault 1, fault 2, fault 3 and so on for a given random value that is not good. Then tomorrow or in the next lecture what you are going to see is that how can you apply a pattern P 1 and see in parallel can you check whether fault 1, fault 2, fault 3 and fault 4 are detectable in one go by this test pattern. So, that we are going to see in the next class and several other similar algorithms which can, uh, can, which can enhance the performance of your fault simulation algorithms. Thank you.